Hi, this is Ryan Thomas with East West, uh, here with another Composer Cloud tutorial. And today's going to be a really fun video. Uh, we are covering the demo that was written for the How to Create a Fantasy Theme One Minute Composer Cloud Tip. And just like in the other tutorials, we're going to take this section by section and break it down by instrument group. So this piece starts off with the flautando violins from Symphonic Orchestra. This is a really nice, very light, airy, ethereal articulation that is perfect for opening a fantasy piece like this. And uh, that MIDI data just looks like this, nothing too fancy going on here. And then we're going to join the violins with the tremolo violas from Hollywood Strings. And I'm going to go ahead and pause it here. As well as the harp and the celeste, which are kind of going to be the backbone for the rest of the piece. Uh, for lack of a better term. And the Celeste here is almost kind of sort of doubling the harp, but not quite. It's really just adding some sparkle on the top end there to give it a little bit more of a magical feel. So again, all together, that sounds like this. And we're also adding this little mark tree here. I'm going to go ahead and stop here because um, we have some woodwind solos to cover. So we've got the alto flute and the English horn doing this lovely little duet here. And uh, I, I really love the alto flute from Hollywood uh, Woodwinds. Uh, it pairs really nicely with the English horn. Even though they're both alto voices, they work really well together in this setting. I'm actually going to go ahead and solo those so that you can hear what they sound like on their own. Obviously, in context, they uh, sound like this. I'll go ahead and start from the beginning again. Alto flute and English horn. Let's go ahead and cover what's going on in the low whistle before we get to the next part, because there is quite a bit going on there. So, you know, interestingly enough, I'm actually uh, a whistle player. Irish whistle is one of my main instruments. And the challenge for this piece was to use a virtual instrument plugin to perform something that I would actually want to hear as a whistle player. To be honest, you know, I've never used this patch because I haven't needed to. As a whistle player, I would typically just record myself. But uh, I was actually blown away by how well the actual instrument was recorded, but also how well they laid out the key switch patch. It's all just very intuitive. Uh, so I'm actually just going to open that for you so that you can see just how many articulations they include in this patch. And they include all the traditional ornaments and vibrato styles. It gives it that characteristic and unique sound. Now, this requires a good bit of key switch programming, but uh, you know, as you can see, there's not a whole lot going on here. You can hear where the different articulations are kicking in, and you can, you can see how that lines up with my key switches here. So I'll go ahead and solo this and play it for you. Yeah, so you can just hear how natural that sounds. Um, again, that's, that's pretty close to how a real whistle player would actually play that line. Obviously, it does kind of depend on the player, but it sounds right to me. 
And uh, quite honestly, that's saying something, especially for a solo instrument. And as exposed as this is, again, I was just really pleased with how well the patch ended up doing. So let's go ahead and hear that in context from the beginning. English horn and alto flute. Okay, let's go ahead and see what's going on here for this uh, sort of swell before the melody comes in. So we are introducing choir here, and this is just the uh, the men's uh, ah patch, nothing too fancy going on here. Again, if you have questions about patches I'm using, just go ahead and check out that patch list in the video description. And uh, I'll go ahead and just solo these so that you can hear them. So we're really just kind of adding these here to help push us into the next section. Uh, they're not really going to be a vital part of the next section. They're just kind of helping with this crescendo. We're also adding our all of our strings here. And I'll go ahead and solo these so that you can hear them all together. And we are also adding a solo French horn. You can just hear how much how much color and texture that adds. I would say that that's that's really necessary in this particular spot. Um, yeah, I really love the solo French horn from Hollywood Brass. I use it all the time. Absolutely gorgeous patch. And uh, then we are also adding, we're adding a lot of our woodwinds here, the clarinet, the oboe, and the bassoon. And I believe, well, no, they, they have their own little line here. They're not just doubling the strings. I think it works in context. It just adds some motion. And the uh, clarinet and oboe are just doubling each other here, playing the same line. And finally, we've got the harp and our percussion. So we've got glockenspiel uh, coming in just for that one section. Celeste has been playing throughout, um, as well as a cymbal swell to push us into the heart of the piece, which is where uh, Voices of Opera is going to take the melody. So let's go ahead and get to that section. And we will start two bars before the melody comes in for context. Go ahead and stop it there and break down what's going on. So Voices of Opera is carrying the melody here. And this is just the legato ah patch with the default mic positions. Haven't really changed much inside the actual instance there. And you can see how the how I've got the uh, expression modulation data recorded here. And that sounds like this on its own. Really useful, beautiful patch. I actually end up using this patch uh, quite a bit in the various film and, and you know TV projects that I'm doing. The legato is nice and natural. I absolutely love the sound. It blends in well with uh, pretty much any mix here. And accompanying this is the women's, just the ooh patch from Hollywood Choirs. And this top note here is actually just doubling what's going on in Voices of Opera with the two bottom notes uh, filling out the chord. And they sound like this together. You know, even that is almost enough <laughs> to fill out this section uh, just because the, you know, the patches are, are so well recorded and just so beautiful. But we've got quite a bit more going on. So we do have some strings that have carried over from that crescendo. And 
I, I guess it's it's worth playing them with the. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and solo the strings. I think it's worth playing them with the choir and the voices of opera here. So no movement in the strings. They're just kind of carrying that note over from the crescendo. And let's throw in the harp and our tuned percussion. That's pretty much all that's going on in this section. So, you know, it's actually fairly simple. And I will go ahead and open up the MIDI data here for the harp as well as the Celeste. So the harp is pretty much just outlining the chord along with the Celeste, adding some magical uh, sparkly stuff on the top end. Very technical terminology there. That's actually it for this section. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and move on from here. We've got a few different things that are happening. We are adding the hammer dulcimer here. And we're actually taking away the women's choir and replacing it with strings. The strings are the high strings are actually going to be playing pretty much the exact same notes that the women's choir was singing. And we are also adding woodwinds that are just doubling the strings here. And the harp has been taken up an entire octave. So I'm actually going to go ahead and start from the previous section so that you can hear the result of all these changes. hammer dulcimer. You can hear what happens when that harp goes up the octave. It lightens everything. Okay, let's go ahead and break everything down. Nothing interesting is happening in the voices of opera that we haven't already covered, so I'm going to go ahead and skip that. We are adding the hammer dulcimer, and the dulcimer is kind of just outlining the chords, almost providing some sort of counter melody if you want to call it that but uh, it's a really nice texture in pieces like these hammer dulcimer is becoming increasingly popular in you know the world of composing it's got this very characteristic percussive sound that also you know is obviously melodic as well and it really helps to define the chords and uh, it's perfect in a piece like this so let's go ahead and listen to that on its own this is actually just from goliath There's not a whole lot of processing that I'm even doing on this patch. You can actually see my EQ right here. Uh, that's, that's pretty much it. It's being sent to some reverb. And uh, it's just got a really nice sound. It was very well recorded. So I'm going to go ahead and solo the uh, hammer dulcimer as well as the voices and the strings. We're going to build it from here. So again, we are removing the women's choir and replacing it with the high strings here. And I've got the violas on a uh, tremolo note here, whereas violins one and two are uh, legato. Okay, and let's add our woodwinds. And the woodwinds are just going to be doubling the strings. We've got alto flute doubling violin one. We've got oboe doubling violin two. And English horn is gonna be doubling the violas. And finally, we are going to add the harp and the tuned percussion. And again, you can see where the harp has moved up the octave. And that does it for this section, I believe. So let's go ahead and move on. 
And I'm going to start two bars before the next section for context. Okay, let's break this down, starting with the choirs. I've added the boys' choir from uh, Symphonic Choirs. They're singing Na Re Mu So. I just thought it sounded cool. And they're going to be joined later by the men's and women's word builder from Hollywood Choirs singing the exact same lyrics. And now the adults are coming in. Fairly simple part writing, not uh, too much to talk about there. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and add the hammer dulcimer. And there's nothing uh, much different going on in the hammer dulcimer, so I'll go ahead and skip that. It's pretty much just outlining chords and, uh, again, you know, providing some kind of counter melody, if you want to call it that. So let's just go ahead and move on to the strings. You can hear that celli run. We're adding the basses now. And I always I always say, you know, save the basses for the moment when you want maximal impact. So I have just saved the basses for these last few bars here. The violin one and two are just on the melody along with the voices of opera. And let's go ahead and check out what the brass is doing. Again, we're also saving the brass just for these last few bars here. So we'll start again uh, about right here. So you've basically got the trombones and the tubas taking the bass line, and the French horn is doing some counter melody. Other than that, not a whole lot to talk about here. The, these are just the legato patches. And then in the woodwinds, we have actually uh, removed most of the woodwinds, uh, except for the bassoon, which is doubling the celli, and the flute, which is actually going to be doubling French horn one in that counter melody. See what that sounds like. You can hear the color that that bassoon is adding to the uh, celli. I should note that the flute and the French horn doubling is fairly unusual. I actually stumbled on it uh, a while back when I accidentally copied from some uh, MIDI data from the French horns into the flute and just thought, man, I really kind of dig that doubling. And so I've used it here and there ever since, and I thought that it worked uh, kind of well in this context. I believe the flute is just one octave above the French horn one. So this is French horn one, and this is flute. You know what? Since we're talking about it, I'll go ahead and just uh, solo those together so that you can hear what they sound like. It's 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 kind of a quirky doubling, but I, you know, again, I I kind of like it. It just adds some definition to that uh, French horn counter melody that uh, I really liked. Okay, and then we are adding the harp and our tuned percussion along with the timpani. Um, so this is just everything now, but I'm going to go ahead and open up the harp. Uh, we're also adding the glockenspiel. And uh, so this is our glockenspiel. This is our celeste. And we've got the timpani here introducing, actually, you know what? I'm going to cover the timpani uh, on its own. Let's go ahead and just uh, play it from here. So we've got that harp list going into this section, and here it is outlining the chords with the celeste. Glockenspiel is on the melody. Mm -hmm. 
And then the timpani is going to be introducing the basses and the brass when they come in. And this is the key switch patch, so it's opening with a timpani roll. And then switching to the hits to define those chord changes. So that pretty much does it for that section. Uh, let's go ahead and just move on to the outro. This pretty much ends just like it started, so let's go ahead and solo the low whistle first. Again, you know, it's you can see there's um obviously a, a good bit of programming going on here, but you know, it's nothing too crazy. It just takes a little bit of time. And the results are uh, are just really really worth it. Okay, and then we are adding the strings, which in this case we just have the tremolo violas. Okay, and then we also have added the alto flute here. It's actually playing harmony to the low whistle. We are ending on that open fifth, which is kind of a nice effect on a piece like this. And then we have the harp. as well as the Celeste. And uh, that pretty much does it for the piece. So let's go ahead and review the reverb. And for those of you who have seen the previous videos, this is pretty much just gonna be review. Um, I don't really do a whole lot different uh, from demo to demo because I'm working in pretty much the same template, but uh, there are gonna be some minor changes here and there. For everyone else, if this is the first of these tutorials that you've seen, this will obviously be new information. So let's start off with the vocal reverb, and we are using the Davies Choir, and you can see all the settings right here. For the hammer dulcimer, I'm actually just sending to the Abandon Abbey reverb. For strings, I'm using the South California Hall string specific impulse. For brass, I'm using the uh, same room, but this is going to be the brass specific impulse. And then finally for uh, woodwinds, as well as the percussion, I'm just using the Northwest Hall. Oh, and uh, I almost forgot about the harp. For harp, I'm, I'm actually just sending harp to the, uh, the string reverb. Um, and it looks like actually in this case, I'm also sending harp to the abandoned abbey instead of uh, the stage verb. Um, again, for those of you who have seen the previous tutorials, you know that I also send almost everything else to the lexicon emulation, one of the lexicon emulations within Spaces 2. This is just kind of my stage glue reverb, but uh, obviously in this session, I did just a couple things different. You know, I'm not sending the harp or the hammer dulcimer to that reverb. Um, this is why, you know, never set a rule for yourself that, uh, that, you, that you absolutely can't violate because in some cases you just kind of have to use your ear. But uh, for the most part, almost everything else is being sent to its own uh, instrument specific reverb as well as that algorithmic reverb. Okay, so I think that does it for this piece. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to get to them as uh, soon as I can. Uh, otherwise, thank you so much for watching and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.